Okay, one of the things that the exam board now want you to do is uh, not only to be able to create a simple graph, but also add in a second axis, um, which will make sense when you've seen how to do it. So, just like normal, highlight your data, go to insert, and insert whatever type of chart that it wants you to insert. So, we'll assume that they want us to put a simple bar chart or a vertical column chart in. Do all your usual stuff with adding your titles and adding your um, chart elements such as your axis titles and things like that but then if it wants you to add a secondary axis for example for the number of pets because at the moment it says that the number of pets is 72 pounds which or 75 pounds for fish which isn't right so what you need to do is right click on the data that you want to have as a second axis and go to change series chart type and then what you can do with this is you can say that this needs to be on a secondary axis. What they're also likely to do, which as you can see here, look, it's put it on the right hand side, so we've now just got numbers, not the currency. What they might want you to do is to maybe change the type of that graph as well, so that you're mixing two types of graph together. Um, we don't know exactly what's going to come up, but it's potentially likely that that might happen. If not, obviously, you just leave it as a column. Um, and it'll work like that. You might need, it might want you to put them, as you say, with different, um, different types, which you can change along the top here. So if we leave it as saying that that one needs to be a line, and the first one needs to be a column, and the number of pets is going to be a secondary axis, we can press OK, and we've got our graph that now has two axes on there. The other thing that potentially might come up is that they want you to change the minimum and maximum values of the axis. Really easy to do. If you just right click on it and go to format axis, you get a box here that says minimum and maximum. So it might want it to be out of 100, so you could change that to 100, press enter, and it'll alter your graph um, accordingly. Another thing within Excel that may come up um, is validation. Now it might be that the validation is already there or it might be that you need to add validation. So validation, if you remember, is a check that is um, done on the data as it's being entered. So for example, in this box here we need to write down the number of tickets that we want, but it has to be between 1 and 10. So we shouldn't be allowed to enter 0 like that, it should bring up an error message. Um, the way that you need to do that is if you go to um, data at the top and then click on data validation you've got lots of different options within here I'm just going to clear that for now so that we can start from scratch so the settings are if we just go through some simple ones first you've got whole number so in this case this would be the one that we use so we want it to be a whole number between 1 and 10 what you can then do is you could also have an input message which says something like information this needs to be a number between 1 and 10 and you can also have an error alert which might say error this is not between 1 and 10 so press OK and that will this is your input message so whenever you click on the cell it brings this up and also if we put 5 in it allows it if we put 0 in it doesn't and it brings up our error message and say if we put 15 in it wouldn't allow that either okay um, other types of validation then that may be asked obviously it's not relevant to this one but um, so we're just clicking a random cell um, we could say that it needs to be a whole number not between a certain number or equal to so it has to be number five not equal to greater than less than greater than less than or equal to um, are the two at the bottom there as well so all things that you should be familiar with you've got decimals exactly the same but with a decimal number you've got list this one's slightly different if I just cancel that say if we've got a list of A, B, C, D, E, F here and in this box they're only allowed to enter one of these things then what we can do is go to data validation and say that it needs to be a list and it then says where's the source of the list so you highlight those press OK and you'll get a drop down box which only allows you to pick one of those if you try and type anything else in such as G it will bring up an error message 
So other validation then, and um, we've done list date, simple between, before, greater than, etc. All simple stuff. Same with time. You've also got text length, so it might be that you're only allowed text up to 20 characters, um, or between certain characters, you just use text length there. I don't think they'll ask you to do a formula as custom because that's uh, insanely difficult, so we can ignore the custom section. So another thing um, on spreadsheets um, is conditional formatting. Now what this does is it will change the look of a cell, so it could be the background colour or the size of the font or the colour of the font, depending what's written in there. So for this example, say if we want the cell background to go red and the text to go white if it says fail, and we want the text um, to stay black but the background go green if it's a pass, then what we would do is highlight the cells go on to the home tab and go to conditional formatting and then say that we want to make a new rule in here it's more than likely going to be the second one down but they're all very easy to use anyway but we want to format only cells that contain now on this one we want to format the cells that are equal to the word pass so to do that we then click on format and simple menus we can just fill it in with a nice green background and press OK and you'll see that the word pass has now gone green and what we can do then is we can go to conditional formatting again new rule same one again cells that contain a cell value equal to fail on this one we want the fill color to be red and we want the font to change to white so we press OK OK again and it will come up as fail. So if we were to change that one to fail it would automatically change the colour and the same with that one there. So other validation then um, if we use these numbers as an example if we go to conditional formatting and we say new rule format only cells that contain so if we say that less than or equal to 3 is a bad score so therefore it's going to go red press OK and conditional formatting new rule format cells that contain between was already selected between 4 and say 6 they're OK scores so that can go a yellow colour and again conditional formatting new rule cells that contain greater than or equal to seven they will go green press OK and it will go like this so if we could imagine that these cells were students scores so this person got eight this person got four this person got five this one got one this one got two eight seven etc then it would automatically um, color code it and that can be done with any type of formatting so it could put a border on it it could make the font bigger etc all really simple to do just using that conditional formatting menu okay um, well, another thing a really easy thing but it's a slight change in the wording so we're going to show you exactly how to do it just in case uh, it might ask you to it normally asks you to fit it to one page it might say fit it to one page wide but two pages tall or it potentially could say two pages wide um, in order to do that when you go to file and print in exactly the same way where you've got your scaling you can click on custom scaling options and here you can say fit to one page wide by two pages tall or fit to two pages wide by one page tall and change it to landscape whatever they ask you to do it's really simple but it's there if you've never used that before so still talking about spreadsheets something else that might crop up is testing um, so you will be giving this printed out but it, I just thought it would be worth me explaining it to you as well um, just in case you lose it or anything like that so um, this is straight from the specification it says that you might be asked to devise suitable test plans and test the data to demonstrate the model works you might actually be asked to make a test plan um, you also got some terms that you might need to define so we'll go over these in a second explain why we need to test it before it's used uh, um, select appropriate test data um, so that it's thoroughly tested justify why you use that test data Calculate the expected outcomes before testing the model. Test the model correcting errors and retesting when appropriate. 
and test the model by using something called what ifs. So the definitions then that you need to be aware of, testing, this is basically checking that a system produces accurate data that meets the requirements set out when the system was being investigated. So it's checking that the system works, it's accurate, there's no mistakes in it and also that it does what it's set out to do. So the test data is the actual numbers or the words or the symbols that you're going to type into the system um, to check that it works. So it could be the test data is 15 or the test data is pass, something like that. The expected outcome is what should happen. So if everything's correct in the system, what should actually happen? Now it says that you need to be able to calculate this, so it might be a case of using the on-screen calculator, um, which is just in the start menu, to figure out what the answer should be and then checking it against what's shown on your screen. So the actual outcome, once you've tested it and you've put in your test data, this is what actually happened. Now it should match um, what the expected outcome is. If it doesn't, then that test is a fail, and in which case you have to make some changes to the system and retest it again afterwards. So there's three different types of test data that you need to be aware of and that you might need to use within your system. This is what makes me think that validation might come up. So normal data, we've done this previously, but I'll go over it again anyway. Um, normal data is data that should be normally accepted into the system. So for example, if it's one to 10, then the number six should appear with that, without any errors. Abnormal data is something that's outside of this range or the wrong data type. So if it's only numbers one to 10 and you enter the word cat, then obviously it's gonna throw up an error message, ideally. Or if you tested it with a number 125, that should also bring up an error message. Extreme data, it should still be accepted into the system, so it is normal data. However, the values are chosen to be at the limits of the normal range. So if it's one to 10, um, then you'd test it with a number one, and you'd also test it with a number 10. It should be accepted into the system, but it's extreme because it's on the very edges of this boundary. Finally then for the definitions, um, a what if, um, it basically allows you to ask questions of the spreadsheet. Um, and this is what spreadsheets are all about really so it's about being able to change certain things it could be changing the formula slightly or it could be changing the variables so changing the numbers on the spreadsheet to see what happens because of that change so what if i increase my prices um what if i how you know what if my profit margin drops uh, what might happen in a year if i continue selling at this rate etc etc so as i previously said you might need to set up a test plan so a test plan is basically a table um that outlines how you're going to test the system in order to make sure that there's no mistakes and that it meets all the requirements that it was um, originally set out to achieve. Um, so it's likely to look like this. Um, the example, I haven't given us a specific example to go by, but this is your standard test plan. They may give you a table to fill in or they may tell you what headings to use, um, but there shouldn't be anything that's out of the ordinary. So. You might have a test number down the one side uh, and then a description of the test which just explains what it is that is going to be tested. So if we look at this first example, it's test one, we're going to test that the sum function works in cell C4 or it could be test that the total profit is correct in C4. Uh, the type of test is valid because um, we're entering correct data into it, we're not entering the word cat or anything daft like that. So we're going to say cell C1 is 10 and 5 and 5 for cell uh, C2 and 3. Uh, and therefore we've calculated this, obviously it's an easy one to do in your head, but you may need to use a calculator. So our expected outcome is that the result in cell C4 will be 20, because it's adding those together. We can say then that the actual outcome, if we actually put these numbers into cells 1, 2 and 3 in column C, then it's a pass, our formula was correct, the result in C4 was 20. So this one's slightly different because it's testing validation. So we're testing that cell D1 only allows numbers between 1 and 10 to be entered. So similar to the validation that we set up earlier. So a valid test would be saying D1 equals 5, and the data should be accepted with no errors. Pass, the data was accepted. Another one, same description, testing D1 for 1 to 10. But we're going to do an invalid test, which means that we're going to enter 15 into D1. So this time we're going to say the data should not be accepted, and an error message should appear. Again, we're going to say pass, this appeared. Um, it didn't allow... 15 to be entered into the spreadsheet. Finally we've got an extreme test so again exactly the same description but it's extreme this time we're saying D1 is 10 because that's on the very boundaries we should also test it with 1 as well. We're going to say the data should be accepted with no errors because 10 should be included however you know on this one perhaps it's failed so an error message appeared the validation routine will need to be changed to include the number 10 in the range. So again they could ask you to create one of those or add bits to it or evaluate one say things that could be added to it 
as long as you understand what one is then you should be able to evaluate the effectiveness of one or create your own